Hi, I'm Mark, aka Ambassadors, and you're here today in my studio in South East London. Um, and today I'm going to be taking you through my track, Nocturnes. <music> So I started with this track, um, this is a sample off of a track. And then uh, I cut that up into EXS uh, and then I have all these slices over the keys. And then I just wrote in some notes and found a, like, a melodic progression that worked for me. It sounds a bit weird and out of time, out of context of the drums, but um, when the drums come in, it um, makes a lot more sense. And then I split that over a couple of different octaves, um, just to sort of thicken it out a bit. Put different amounts of reverb on each of the tracks. So I've got like a high one running, um, which has a lot more reverb on it. Uh, so yeah, for the reverb, I just use Space Designer. It's kind of my go-to reverb. Um, it always sounds great. It's easy to tweak. Um, and then I've added a bit of tape delay. Yeah, so with the delay, it's just got a tiny little bit of... Uh, it's like a slap back kind of thing. Low feedback. Just to sort of... Um, it's like a sort of echo, really. Um, yeah, so once I had the sample sorted and a kind of uh, a progression that I liked from the sample, um, I found a bass line that worked with it and um, I do that to sort of start writing the chords around it, so the progression changes. Yeah, so the bass part consists of two different layers. Um, one's a kind of more ambient bass, um, which has some reverb on it. I'll just turn it up. I uh, did this with Omnisphere. It's pretty much my go-to synth. I use it for tons and tons of different things. Um, I think this is actually a pad patch, um, but it ended up working in the, in the lower range. Um, yeah, it started off as a preset, which I tweaked. Um, then from there, I needed to add a bit more bottom end, so I did an actual bass. So I've got those two going on. I've got the higher sort of ambient bass and then the low subier bass. Um, the sub bass I did with Trillion. It's another uh, Spectrosonics plugin, which is great. Uh, it's just a Moog sampled bass, nothing too exciting. Uh, that's running through our bass, which just gives it a bit more, um, sort of brings out the mids a little bit, makes it translate on uh, smaller speakers better. Uh, EQ, um, what did I do here? So the kick in this track is around this sort of region. Um, so I've cut that out so they're not clashing too much. Um, there's a bit of reverb on the bass. It's a bit controversial, but I like it. Um, okay. So when I had those two different elements working together, um, I started thickening up the, the harmonies with um, some pads. So on this track, I've got three different layers of pads. And then also there's some pads that I made out of vocals that I recorded, um, which come in a bit later, but I'll get to that later. Um, so the pads for this are from Isotope Iris, which is a great uh, plugin. It's a granular synthesis uh, plugin. So you can load samples in. Um, it takes different grains from the sample and layers them up. Um, it's really nice for ambient. 
ambient style pads, which keep evolving, so it keeps them really interesting. Um, yeah, what else? Um, so I've run that through Stereo Savage, which is a great plugin. Um, just makes it sound nice and wide. It detunes like the left and the right channel and adds a bit of uh, timing differences to keep it, uh, to make it wider. Cool. Um, uh, so the reverb on this one comes from Valhalla Shimmer, um, which is a plugin that's kind of similar to the uh, Strymon Big Sky, if you've ever used that. Um, and it just does these really good ethereal reverbs really well. So the second layer of pads, um, this is another isotope iris. Um, it's just layering up really to thicken it out. Not too much interesting going on here. This started off as a preset again, um, which I tweaked. There's a uh, quite a bit of modulation going on within the patch um, to keep it moving. So pad wise, there's also some vocal bits that I recorded, um, which are pitched, reverbs, These bits, as you can probably hear, are being run through Crystallizer from uh, Sound Toys, which is another granular thing, um, which just adds these high, high frequency granules of the original sound. So this is the wet signal. Um, so there's just a touch of that in there. And then when you play them all together, you have you've got this evolving texture and it's never really the same. Uh, twice because of all the modulation that's going on, all the cross modulation from all the different plugins. Um, so there's a lot of random in there, which is quite nice. Um, bring the bass in and it makes it a little bit more sense in context. Uh, vocal wise, there's another little cheeky vocal sample, which I'm not going to disclose where it's from. Um, Yeah, so that's like the meat of the of the ambience, I suppose. It's quite a sort of um, ambience heavy track. So, um, oh yeah, there's also this little lead line that goes over the top, um, just to add a little ambient melody. I'll play it in context, it doesn't really make sense otherwise, but. Just a little melodic thing. Uh, that was created with Predator. Um, I created that patch so long ago, I don't know, how, don't know what I did with it, so it's not worth me going for it. Um, the distortion is just from a clip distortion. A little bit nasty, but um, it helps it like cut through this really thick mix. Um, that's also got Valhalla Shimmer on it. Um, which is just really nice for long reverbs. What else? Um, <clears throat> so all of those things in context, it starts making a bit more sense what's going on. Sort of. I mean, the rhythm of the sample doesn't really make sense until the drums come in, which is kind of interesting. Um, 
So with this cheeky sample, it's basically that. Um, it's run through a pitch shifter because it was slightly out of tune for some reason. Um, on top of that, there's an auto filter, which has an LFO running on the cutoff, um, just to keep it modulated so it's not exactly the same sample plate every single time. Um, just sort of soften it a little bit so it's not too in your face. Um, and then a long reverb um, from Space Designer, which I use a lot. Um, then there is a tape delay with a little bit of, oh no, it doesn't have that on it. Just a bit of feedback. And then there's another EQ. And then, yeah. So you go from that, which is kind of boring, to... And there we go. Cool. Okay, so the kick in this track consists of two different kicks. Um, one is the, the main kick. Um, I can't show you exactly what's going on because for some reason it was glitching logic out. Um, so I had to freeze that track. Um, but yeah, it's pretty standard really. Compression, EQ, um, yeah. Uh, on top of that, there is a kick which is called Kick Source, which is like a little bit of flavor um, on the kick. It gives a sort of a wide, it's like a stereo, uh, it's like a stereo reverb tail off a kick. Um, it just makes it extra wide. Um, so for the other sounds in the drums on this, um, a lot of them are kind of foley stuff um, that I found and cut little bits out that I liked. Um, so a lot of these are ones that I've built up myself uh, in the same way that I did with the kick. Um, it's lots of different individual samples split over. Um, split over the keyboard on an EXS24 sampler. Um, so there's a few different finger snaps going on here. Um, when I'm using drum samples in EXS24, I like to use this random control. Um, so every time a sample is played back, it plays it back at a slightly different pitch and it gives it a sort of a more humanized feel. Um, so started layering these up. These are other Foley recordings. Um, there's some claps going on. Uh, the claps came from Machine, uh, Native Instruments. It's a plugin I got recently. Um, it's got some great sounds on it. And then there's more snares. So at the moment there's about five different layers of snares or claps going on. Um, um, with this track, I ended up using this reverse um, sub drop sample, um, which comes in just before the kick. Um, it's kind of got this like sucking uh, bass sound. Um, what else? Um, there's a textural channel going on on here which is kind of like vinyl crackle but um, so I took a vinyl crackle sample and I split it up um, I cut it up into like a rhythm basically um, it's just kind of a subtle rhythm going on in the background. Um, there's also... What else is there? Within the drums, there's like a vocal... Um, another vocal sample, which is processed similar to what I did earlier. Um, 
on the main vocal sample. So I've made that into a sort of more percussive sound. Um, and that fits into the rhythm. Uh, yeah, so basically all of these um, different channels here and quite a few of the ones down here are all um, just different tracks of Foley things um, that either I've recorded or I found on websites like Freesound, um, which is a great resource for finding these sorts of um, sounds that you can download and use for free. Um, I find them a little bit more interesting than using traditional drum sounds um, because you can really sort of build your own palette of more unique sounds. Um, so all of those different channels when you play them together they all come together to make this rhythm. Um, on top of that, there's also a loop of a uh, jazz drummer, um, which I use just because I like the sounds of real drums in my uh, drum tracks. It's just got a nice, it's a ride, uh, it's actually a ride symbol being played uh, which I processed with Transient Master just to um, get rid of all the sustain um, so without it it's very like washy um, and then with this on you can really hear like the transients coming through a lot better um, because it was muddying up the whole mix with that one basically. When I'm producing, I like to use buses a lot. Um, it keeps things organized and I can process all of the sounds together. Um, it really helps to glue um, glue things and you can make things sound like they're all in the same room rather than you know all these separate sounds going on. Um, so with this one, I've used Decapitator, which is a plugin I love uh, from Sound Toys. Um, I'm using it in a parallel way. Um, so I'm mixing in the wet signal with the dry signal. The wet signal is pretty heavily distorted. Um, that's the wet signal. And then that's just being mixed in ever so slightly. So you've kind of got this parallel compression as well going on with this. Um, yeah. Um, I've got some parallel compression going on with the TG12345. Um, with this, the wet signal is like smash. Not really much dynamic, but when you mix it in with the dry signal, it brings up all of the low level um, sounds whilst preserving uh, the transients and the punch. Um, what else have I got going on? I've got. It's being run through this, but it's not doing anything for some reason. Um, I probably put it on and may have changed some of the gains and now it's not actually affecting the sound too much, but I've left it on anyway. Um, from there, I'm going through Vitamin, uh, just because I found, when I was doing the final mix down, I found that the drum sounds were a little bit dull. Um, so I wanted to put some more energy into the high end um, without it. It's like this, not very exciting. And then this really brings out the transients and all those high level, uh, high frequency details. Okay. Um, from there on the drum bus, uh, it's going into this um, FabFilter Pro MB, which is a great multiband uh, compressor. Um, as you can see, I started off with this preset. Uh, I think it just sounded the best as I was taking through, and then I have tweaked it. Um, I use this because without it, with all the different things going on, it was quite hard to get them all completely balanced. So it was kind of a lazy, um, it was a lazy way of going about 
keeping all the volumes all together, I suppose. Um, yeah. Um, then from there, it goes into an EQ, which is EQ in the whole bus. Um, I do this on buses when I have like the balance between the instruments all working quite well, but I just need to affect the overall tone of the entire drum sound. Uh, yep, so that's doing that. Um, <clears throat> There's a limiter on the bus just to, just in case anything's going over. Um, it's not actually working on anything. It's just there, just in case. It's not going to hurt. Um, okay. So with the drums, uh, to create, um, you can create quite drastic. Uh, changes in feel just by changing one of the elements. Um, so, for example, um, we're, we're going from one section here into another section here. Um, when it switches to the second section, um, we have these triplet, um, triplet almost hi-hats come in um, and it changes the feel of the entire loop. Whilst everything else is pretty much playing the same thing. So now it goes into a triplet fill. Um, um, okay, in the second section of the track, there's an arpeggiator that comes in. Um, this was just done on a plugin. Um, I used Yuhi Diva for this. Um, it's an amazing plugin. It's got a really, really awesome analog sound. Um, it uses up most of my CPU, but I think it's worth it. Um, so with this one, it's kind of a Moogie patch um, that I tweaked. The arpeggiator itself is coming from um, <clears throat> one of Logic's MIDI effects. Um, I just find it's a lot easier than learning all the different arpeggiators of all the different synths. Um, I'm better off just learning how to use one. Um, so that's pretty simple. So with the patch for the arpeggiator, um, it started off with a preset mini bass drum. It's obviously not a mini bass drum anymore. Um, so this is a Moog style oscillator going into a Moog style filter. Uh, the great thing about this is you can switch between you know different flavors of different oscillators, filters from different synth manufacturers. Um, it's got three oscillators going. One of them is slightly detuned. It's got some feedback in there and some noise which I quite like to uh, give a more sort of distorted sound. Sounds a lot less clean, which I like. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, it goes into Space Designer again. Um, quite a long tail reverb on that one. Um, yeah, it's an impulse response from a church, which is quite nice. Uh, going into this section, I decided that the main cut-up sample that I was using, this one, um, it ended a bit too suddenly. So what I did was I duplicated that channel, um, pitched it up an octave. I like to do this quite a lot. Um, and then I ran it through a nice long reverb. Um, and just have that playing through the first bar of the breakdown. Um, so it sort of eases into the breakdown rather than just sort of stopping suddenly. Um, here it comes to okay. So when going from one section which is quite built up into like 
something like a breakdown. I like to make small little details that help sort of ease into it uh, so things aren't so sudden. Um, with this one, I made this little synth embellishment kind of. Um, That's the sound of it, um, and basically I made that by putting a tremolo on it and just automating the rate from 64th note down to 8th note, um, so you get the sound of something slowing down um, whilst keeping it in time as well. Um, Uh, this is what I've got on the master channel. Uh, it's nothing too crazy um, because I like to keep that, uh, keep the mastering process separate to the mixing process. Um, here I've basically just got this Brainworks EQ, it's the mid-side EQ. Uh, I use it quite a bit when I'm mastering. Um, all I'm doing here really is, hang on, let me just unsolo that. Um, um, I'm using it in mid-side mode, um, purely just to cut out sub-frequencies in, uh, in the side channel, basically. Um, so I can go from mono to a full range side signal, uh, it just keeps it a lot cleaner. It's just taking out one decibel of uh, low frequency. Um, just to tidy up again. Um, in terms of limiting, let's take that off. Um, the limiter's is not really working very hard at all. It's just, you know, just catching any peaks. Obviously, once I've finished mixing it, I'll export a proper pre-master, and then I will do a proper master through analog gear. Um, yeah. So I like, to, yeah, I like to keep the master channel clean. I find if you put too many different plugins and start trying to fix everything in the mastering, um, by the time you export your pre-master, what you've got is very different from what you've been hearing. Um, so when I export the pre-master, I will take off both of these plugins, um, just because I can do the same changes that I've done here in the analog domain, it's going to sound a lot nicer. Um, when mixing, I like to keep a target sort of level uh, to keep my peaks around minus five or minus six. Quite, as a mastering engineer, quite a lot of the time people send me stuff that is way too loud and clipping, um, and then you have to go back to the mix and revise it. Um, one trick that I like to do uh, to keep to keep me from going too loud is when I start off with a track, I'll put a limiter on it uh, and put like 10 decibels of gain on it and then start mixing like that um, so that you've always got some headroom to go back on. Okay, thanks for joining me and um, thanks for Future Music for coming down. Um, you can check out my music online and that's it.